Hello everyone and welcome back to Coded by Jade. Now, since A-Level Resorts Day, I did promise to make a video on how I got 3 A stars and an A in AS Level Further Maths. This video will be generalised on how to achieve top grades coming from a triple A star student. So be sure to keep on watching to find out how you can receive grades like mine in your next academic year. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to be the first to see my latest content. Before I continue this video, I want to do a quick disclaimer. What works for some may not work for others. Only take inspiration from my method and don't take it to heart. I realise that sometimes procrastination can occur because you don't enjoy the study co content and method that you have learned from someone else. You have to learn what works best for you and this is what keeps you to stay studying even when you're at your lowest moments and don't want to revise to make sure that you obtain those top grades that you can be proud of at the end of the year. So, my first point. Is note taking necessary? I'm not sure if this is the same for each school, but when it was my sixth form, you are given exercise books for you to write class content and notes down. Of course, this differs for maths where you get a squared exercise book and of course you have to write down the formulas and answer each question. So this doesn't apply for maths or further maths. Now, I realised for myself personally that when I would write all these notes, Yes, I would write it, but after I finished the day and even when I was preparing for my exams, I never actually even looked back at these notes. And after watching Ali Abdel's video on note-taking and active recall, I decided to completely abandon taking notes properly altogether. Now by properly, I mean instead of writing down sentences, I started to write down questions based on what's being taught to me in class and I would write down the answers to those questions. I would convert these questions to put on notion pages with toggles. So it, it would be a toggle object. I'll have the question and in the drop down, I'll have the answer. And I'll also use that for Quizlet and any paper flashcards, which I use for last minute studying. So for me personally, note taking wasn't necessary, but it, this again will differ from person to person. And it's just my personal advice on how to save time and maximize your and maximize your memory of each topic and performance. Next is time management. Now, I think this is the third time I will stress this, but time management is the number one key on receiving top grades to, that you can be proud of at the end of summer. Now, I used a range of time management skills and this included keeping an academic diary and the diary was a data view. And in the diary, I would write down to-do lists. And towards the end of the year, I started timing this to-do lists by like, say for example, starting at 10 a.m., then 11 and throughout the day. I even estimated how long each task would take me. And I'd feel satisfaction ticking off that I've done everything I needed to do. And this gave me the confidence that I was well prepared for any assessments or the end of year assessments that were collected for teachers um, assess grades or it may be for you the real exam. Now during my EPQ I learned how to prioritise my time. So depending on whether a task was crucial or not crucial I would write num I would number each page so I would number which tasks were the most important and least important and I'd do it in order priority. And this helped me make sure that the most important tasks were completed on time and any tasks that I didn't manage to do, they were less crucial tasks that I can complete at a later date. Next, Pomodoro timer. So I use this in exam crunch time and I know a lot of people say that Pomodoro timer, like you don't want to stop when you're in the zone. But I believe that sometimes the Pomodoro timer was necessary in making sure I wasn't spending too long on a specific task that I could do quicker. Rather than spending one hour on something, maybe I could do that in that 25 minutes of crunch time. Next, don't aim for a specific grade. Now I'm a strong believer that anyone can receive any grade that they want to, barring any um, learning disabilities of course. That if you put your mind to it, you can really achieve something. A C student can easily change to a 3A star student with the right mindset. And a great quote for this is shoot for the moon and you'll land among the stars. 
So if you're a C student and you want to improve your grades, I wouldn't say, oh, how can I get an A grade? How can I get a B grade maybe? But I would say, how can I do the best I possibly can? How can I maximize the number of marks I can get in each test and each assessment? And that's really the key, in my opinion, on being a top level student and receiving the best grades. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Too many people are too shy to ask questions. Maybe they feel silly. Maybe they don't want to embarrass themselves in front of their classmates. But I believe that if you ask questions, then you can solidify the knowledge in your mind and this will help with your grades. So whether that's asking your teacher or even the peers around you for help, online forums or YouTube comments, if you start to ask more questions, you begin to solidify your knowledge and this will help you become a better student as well as memorize things more easily by actually understanding what you are being taught. And with that point, understand the content thoroughly. If you can't explain the content, then you don't understand it well enough. And what I personally used to track whether I understood the content or not is that I'll get people around me, I'll get a whiteboard pen and I'll attempt to teach it to that person and even if a person has no idea what I'm talking about, like I often did this with my mom, I would talk about computer science at A-level, I even used Spanish at GCSC. Even though she didn't understand what I was saying, you can hear in your tone, your confidence levels, and that they can relay that to you. And even if I found that my mom, who has, doesn't know anything about computer science, when she's able to recall something that I've told her, I know that I've um, explained this clearly, and therefore I know that I understood the content. So if it's possible, maybe your parents, even your friends around you, even to yourself in a, um, a fake YouTube video, for example, if you can explain content to others, then this will help you understand this content more. And another point in understanding your content thoroughly is to learn your specification inside and out. Again, to reference Ali Abdal, what I did was retrospective study planning. I went through my specifications and I wrote out each different topic that I had to learn and I put this in a retrospective study planner and again I'll link this video, I've linked the video before and I'll link it again on how you can do this with your own specification. And with this I would go through each content, I would recall what I remembered, track what I didn't remember and revise over and over again what I didn't remember until I knew the specification inside and out. And this way, when you're in an exam, when you're in an assessment, you won't get tripped up with content that you're like, oh, I didn't know what this content was. You will be, you would have the confidence to know that you knew the specification inside and out and you've understood it well. And this is the best way to achieve top grades during your A-levels. Next, practice questions and then practice them again. So there's a variety of resources that are able to practice questions, whether it's textbooks, past papers, exercise sheets that your teacher has given you. There's a wide range of resources for you to keep on practicing questions and you shouldn't neglect this at all. Of course, you need to practice questions so you know how to answer these questions in the exam. And when I say practice them again, I mean, let's say, let's say this is maths and you've done integration by parts. You did this in class, you practiced the questions, maybe um, it was an assessment, in-class assessment, and you practiced all the questions possible with integration by parts. When it comes to the end of your exams, you may say, oh, I've done all the um, worksheets, I've done all the questions for integration by parts already, but it will be best for you to practice these again up to the exam time to make sure that you've got your technique. Because I know for maths, you can often, with all the amount of information, you can often lose track of how much you do actually remember. So it's good to practice questions and practice them again. I also did an essay subject, which was business. And I believe practice questions and practice them again, especially when it came to writing the 25 markers, was the best way to solidify your paragraph and essay writing technique. So this applies for math subjects, science subjects, humanities. It doesn't make a difference. Practice these questions and practice them again. Extra reading. If you really want to stand out, and this is slightly more applicable to business and even computer science long answer questions, then extra reading can really help solidify your knowledge and even expand it to pressure examiners, to pressure teachers, whatever it is. Sources I personally used, and this was for maths, business and computer science, were the FT News Briefing, and I listen to this every morning. 
computer file on any A-level computer science topics such as A-star pathfinding, Geeks for Geeks to help with my coding, Business Insider just to see how businesses really operate and small startups etc and all these other resources to help expand my learning. And by doing this, you really get stuck into the subject and you learn things and it gives you the motivation to become a top grade student. So those were some quick tips on how to become a top grade student and achieve the best grades at A level. So as I said before, I studied maths, AS further maths, business and computer science. And if any of these subjects um, coincide with what you are also studying at A-levels, I'm going to leave a link below to all of these resources I use, such as understanding the content thoroughly, YouTube videos, specifications and practice questions in the description below for you to check out for yourself and use this, implementing this in your own study method. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you um, understand how you can become a top student. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content. And I hope to that you'll tune in for the next video. Bye.